So when he gets home, he asks his dad, Daddy, you know, my wife told me that you went down to the front of what was a very specific altar call for salvation. Mm -hmm. But Dad, you told me you got saved in like 1974. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lawn. You know, when I was sitting down with Pastor Greg, and I'm not sure if this is if this is if this is a parallel that I maybe I'm just seeing, mm -hmm. or if this is an actual parallel, but but Pastor Greg, Greg Glory told me, he said he initially got the word got a word from Lonnie Frisbee that he was going to be speaking in front of thousands. Wow. Lonnie, Lonnie had a vision that Greg was going to speak in front of thousands. He hadn't preached at this point. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and <laughs> he was the cartoonist. Uh, he was doing the, the Bible tracks, Living Water Bible tracks, like one of, some of the first ones that he drew. And he said he didn't know how it was going to happen, but the opportunity presented itself. And it's in the Jesus Revolution movie for them to basically plant a church, mm -hmm. Harvest in Riverside. And so he said he pastored Harvest, I want to say, for like 25 years until he had the opportunity to go and be an evangelist. And for 25 years, he was faithful to being a local church pastor. And now, 25 years later after that, then him, Chuck Smith, all these guys get together and they launched the Harvest Crusades. And the Harvest Crusades had him in front of, a, I think, over the, oh, however many years they've done him, over 7 million people. Crazy. Purely evangelistic. Crazy. Outreach. Crazy. Right? And so there's this season he goes through of, I feel like I'm an evangelist. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this, but I'm going to be faithful mm -hmm. and serve as a local church pastor, mm -hmm. even though I want to do this, mm -hmm. and did it faithfully. Yeah. And now, not only is how Harvest Festivals have been going on for, I think, I don't know, two decades or something yeah. like that. Because they, they were, those were fading. Those were starting as Billy Graham was fading. Yep. But now there's the Jesus Revolution movie. And now it's infinitely scaled. Yep. It's going on streaming. Yep. Right? And so it, it, it's... And again, I don't mean to project this on you, but it no, reminds fine. me of the same way in terms of you having a vision, art, comedy, music, yeah. Yeah. evangelist. Yeah. You go be faithful to yep. multiple churches. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And now you're in the content space which is infinitely scalable. Oh, dude, it's we've reached more people in the last nine and a half months of this podcast than all 27 years of me preaching combined. Yeah. That's kind of crazy to think about. It's surreal. Yeah. It's absolutely surreal. Yeah. So it's, it's a, and I never saw it coming. Yeah. Like it was never a desire. It was never like a, man, I wish one day I could do this. It was, it's, it's been an assignment like anything else. Yeah. I have prayed to the Lord like, unashamedly, I would love to do this as long as I preached. Yeah. So yeah. if I had 27 years to do this, that yeah. would be dope. Yeah. Do you, did you feel like you were both a evangelistic person who can also local shepherd? Or do you feel like you were more of an evangelist and you just were faithful to shepherd and be a pastor in a local church context? So I'm, I'm, I see myself more as an Apostle, pastor, apostle, so, apostolic, yeah. Gifting, yeah. So, so I love the apostolic of sending, being sent to build, so mm -hmm. I can build to send. Mm -hmm. I'm a disciple maker mm -hmm. at my core. Mm -hmm. Juliet and I both. Were, mm -hmm. That's why we homeschooled our kids. We were like, they won't have enough of us in them in five years before we send them to kindergarten. Yep. Right? We were like, they got to stay home with us, yep. right? Yep. And 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 once we got to the decade point, we're like, we're about to see this all the way through. Um, and I love who my boys are becoming as a result. Yeah. No, we, not, we homeschool as well, yeah, so I'm yeah. totally with you on that. Yeah, I'm not knocking public school, yeah. but I'm a disciple maker, man. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, So we love to take the time to turn good into great, mm -hmm. right? Hey, you want to see something crazy? 67% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. Do me a quick favor. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all the videos here on the Bless God Studios channel. And so I've always I've always seen myself like that. I always knew the church wasn't going to be thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. because I don't have that evangelistic component. Okay, gotcha. I am a very much like, like, oh, I'm so grateful you're interested in Jesus. Yeah. Are you ready to be, you ready to pick up your cross? Yeah. Like, like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like straight to the like, are you ready to eat his flesh and drink his blood yeah, yet? Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the real warm and fuzzy yeah. kind of like yeah, he yeah, yeah. loves you, he believes in yeah. you, and there's something. Right. I believe in all of that too, yeah. and I believe <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to pick up that cross and yeah. start following them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I am, so I've always seen myself like that. So when I came into, into this space now, mm -hmm. 
and we saw the reach, I was like, I never imagined mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that type of message yeah. would resonate. But it resonates more with me sitting down talking than it was with me standing up preaching, yeah. which is cray cray. Yeah. But yeah, whatever. But I think, well, I mean, Paul's letters resonate more than yeah. Paul's actual preaching. Right. People fell asleep when he preached. Right. So, right. and you feel a like a person fell asleep when he preached. That, that disciple making apostolic visionary gifting can, can be and was at times at the detriment of growing the church faster. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because. Well, really, I, I'm, I'm, detriment might might not be the right word because God gave me a very specific blueprint mm-hmm. and mission uh, for Embassy City. Mm-hmm. When he told me that the church was going to be in Texas, I was really bummed. You wanted I, to come back. You was going back to Cali. I wanted to be in Cali. <laughs> going, going. I want, yeah, yeah. Back I, back. I wanted to be in uh, Miami. I wanted to be in Australia. Yeah. I wanted to be somewhere secular. Yeah. I wanted to be... I wanted to be out of the Bible Belt yep. around people yep. that didn't even think they were saved. Yes. The issue with the Bible Belt is they already think they know Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they, so, so I got to give you the greatest story. And this story will summate what my entire assignment was mm-hmm. as the lead pastor of this church. Mm-hmm. So I preached this one message. I can't even remember what it was. And at the end, I, I do a very specific call for mm-hmm. salvation, mm-hmm. right? This there's no mistake in what this altar call is for mm-hmm. if you need to give your life to Jesus, yes. right? My children's pastor's dad comes to the front, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. This guy's 70-something years old, mm-hmm. and we all think he's already a believer in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, why We don't think anything other. His mm-hmm. son doesn't. His daughter-in-law doesn't. The kids don't. Mm-hmm. I don't, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So after the service... His wife saw him come down, mm-hmm. uh, the church's pastor's wife, because he was up with the children. So when he gets home, he asks his dad, Daddy, you know, my wife told me that you went down to the front of what was a very specific altar call for salvation. Mm-hmm. But, Dad, you told me you got saved in, like, 1974. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Puerto Rican guy, he goes, I know, hijo. I thought so, too. <laughs> he said, I'm sitting there listening to Tim's message, mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit tells me, In 1974, you didn't give your life to Jesus. Mm. You gave your life to your denomination. (laughs) He said, so I had to go up. Wow. Because all of these years, I didn't give my life to Jesus. Now, God loves him. He's been in church. I mean, it could be worse, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what my assignment was to tell people (laughs) who already thought they met him. Yeah. No, you didn't. That's good. (laughs) That's what I did for seven years. Yes. And that was some hard work, fam. Yeah. In in hindsight, I can see it. But there was a grace on me to do it Mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. But no, those sermons was not about to go viral. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't about to wind up, you know, being asked to go preach at everybody's church, telling people you basically have never met Jesus. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I have. I've been in church since I was 11. You never met the man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see the full extended version of this podcast, be sure to sign up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month. It'll really help us continue contextualizing the gospel using YouTube, media, and podcasting. And in exchange, you will get full unedited versions of the podcast, of our daily after-party streams, a discount for our merch store, and exclusive access to our private Discord server. It's only $5 a month. The link for Patreon is in the description of this video, as well as the pinned comment below. Again, hit the link in the description, sign up now, and I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.